Now that's pretty scary, but don't worry, the data is gonna reveal some pretty amazing information. Folks, welcome to statistics. On December 26, 2004, a massive earthquake of Richter scale 9.0 rocked the Indian subcontinent off the coast of Sumatra. This earthquake killed almost 297,000 people. It unleashed a massive tsunami that killed many more. We're going to be using statistics to understand just how powerful that earthquake truly was in the broader historical context. To do so, we'll be using data from the United States National Geographic Survey that encompasses earthquakes all the way from 2000 BC to modern day time. We're going to be taking a look at all of those earthquakes using statistics and trying to understand just how powerful the Indonesian earthquake of 2004 truly was. All right, folks, let's go ahead and check it out. To understand the true scale of the Indonesian earthquake, I'm gonna make a list of all the magnitudes of all the earthquakes for at least the last 100 years. Let's go ahead and write that list down. All right, folks, so right here, I've got a list, okay? Now, to be honest, this isn't accurate, but you can pretend it is, okay? So here I've got a list of the magnitude of, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 earthquakes. Now, from this list, we need to visualize the actual data. I mean, this doesn't help anyone understand what's going on. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make a histogram. A histogram is almost like a bar chart, but it has many, many, many important but small differences, okay? Let's go ahead and make the histogram, and then we're going to analyze each one of those differences one by one. All right, folks, so I've got my two axes for the histogram, right? I've got my x-axis, my y-axis, but this is a traditionally bad graph. Why? It doesn't have two things. A X axis label and a Y axis label. Let's go ahead and put them down. Hi right, folks, so I've just added my Y axis label and my X axis label. Now let's actually put our X axis increments, okay? Let's go ahead and put them down. Now I put my X axis label. Let's go ahead and put our Y axis label for good measure. All right, folks, so now we actually need to count out how many earthquakes fall in each category. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how many earthquakes fall between the two and three range. Okay, so that's going to be one earthquake. And um, wow, that looks like that's pretty much it. One earthquake, okay? So that's one earthquake between two and three. Between three and four, how many earthquakes do we have? We have one earthquake right here, uh, 3.0, another one. Two, uh, so, so far we have three earthquakes with magnitude between three and four. Uh, so we just have three and four and five and six, and that looks to be it. We have six earthquakes of uh, magnitude uh, between three and four. What about magnitude between four and five? Let's go ahead and check them out. Let's see, we've got one. And that right there, folks, is our histogram. Now, now, now. You might be noticing quite a few differences between a histogram and a bar chart. Let's go ahead and identify those differences. Number one, you'll see that there is no gaps between the actual bars. Why is that? Well, any gaps you notice in a histogram are actual gaps in the data, right? So for example, there's no earthquakes with magnitudes between eight and nine. That's why we don't have any bars there. That's why there's a gap there, okay? That's a big thing. Another big thing, 
all of the graphs we're dealing with today deal with quantitative data. Okay, so as you can see, we're dealing with quantitative data right here, and that's why we're using a histogram. If instead I had categorical data, such as number of people who voted for Trump, number of people who voted for Biden, that we would use a bar chart for. Okay, folks, so that's a histogram. Now we're going to move on to a different type of display, but before we do so, let's go ahead and check out just how powerful that Indonesian earthquake was. Remember, that was a magnitude of 9.0 on the Richter scale. And as you can see, that is very, very rare historically. And thus, it was indeed an extremely powerful earthquake. Now, with that question being settled, we're going to be taking a look at our next kind of quantitative data display. And that's the stem and leaf display. Okay, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the stem and leaf display is exactly like what it sounds. It's a stem and leaf display. That doesn't tell you much, I guess. Um, to understand stem and leaf displays, we're going to be taking a look at the heartbeat of a bunch of patients in a hospital room. Uh, that's pretty scary, but don't worry. The data is going to reveal some pretty amazing information. Let's go ahead and write down the pulses, the heart pulses of a few patients in a hospital room. Alright folks, so now we've got a bunch of heart rates right here, heart pulses of resting patients. We've got 80, 78, 94, all sorts of heart rates across the spectrum. Now, what we want to do is take a look at this data in a new way, that's not a histogram. The answer is going to be stem and leaf displays. Now, stem and leaf displays are pretty interesting. They actually take the numerical data and use it as a visualization. Let me show you what I mean. For example, for example, for example, a step and leave display would display this data as such. What did I just do? I wrote seven, long bar eight, nine. What does that mean? Well, look at this data point, 78. I represented it by using seven, which is the ones place. I made it my leap. This ones place is my leap. And my eight, my tens place, I needed my stem, and my stem and leaf, they're separated by this long bar, okay, by this long bar. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and write down all the data values, right? Let me just go ahead and erase this. All right, folks, so now we've got all of our data values right here, right? We've got all of them across the spectrum. Now, you might notice it's starting to get a bit crowded around the nines, right? You get 91 beats per minute, 92 beats per minute. But bottom line is uh, this line's a bit too long. So just like a histogram, we're going to try to break things apart, right? So maybe all the tens digits from 4 to 6 or from 3 to 6, we're going to move down to yet another row. So how's that going to look like? just like this folks and that right there is a stem and leaf display it has a few advantages and the fact that you can actually see visually the numerical quantitative data you're working with but uh, those really are the main advantages of the stem and leaf display now we're going to move on to yet another quantitative data display and that is the dot plot let's go ahead and make a dot plot of the resting heart rates of these Mm, waiting patients, I guess. Now, 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 now. To make, to make a that plot is pretty easy, right? All you're gonna do is establish an x-axis, and we're gonna write the major, the major uh, boxes, if you will. So heart rates around 70, heart rates rather from 70 to 80, from uh, is that it? Yes, from 80 to 90 and from 90 to 100. So these are going to be kind of our three piles of data. Now we're going to actually put the data in these three piles in the form of dots, 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 dots. Let's go ahead and do that. And that right there, folks, is a dot plot. It allows you to easily see what the lowest and the highest data values are. And that's really the advantage of a dot plot. It's quick, it's easy, and it's efficient. All right, folks? 
Thanks for watching and we'll check you out in next time. But before we do so, go ahead and check out the special ending. All right, folks, we'll check you out next time. And that concludes lecture number three of statistics. All right, folks, so now let's review some key terms before we leave it for lecture number three of statistics. Number one, you know what a distribution is by now. A distribution happens uh, when you create equally sized bins and you place data points in those bins, right? So uh, for example, in the dot plot we had in the back right over there, we had bins of size 10, right? Uh, heartbeats between 70 and 80 beats per minute, 80 and 90, 90 and 100. Those were equally sized bins. And the number of uh, quantitative data points in each of those bins formed a kind of distribution. Okay, next thing we want to learn or remember rather is the histogram. The histogram, or as you recall, is almost like a bar chart except it's only used for quantitative data. Okay, now histograms uh, come with a few quirks. First of all, there's no gaps between the columns as there would be in a bar chart except if there's an actual gap in the data. Also, you might have a relative histogram, right? A relative frequency histogram, where instead of indicating the actual count of each quantitative data bin, you show the percentage, right? Okay, so they're pretty much the same. And next up is the stem and leaf display. We took a look at that. Uh, and the stem and leaf display is useful when you wanna sketch a quick little, you know, hand version of the histogram uh, with hand, right? You saw that we actually broke up the actual numerical data points into a stem and a leaf, into a tenth place and a month's place. Uh, we also looked at the dot plot, which is a kind of a quick graph, shows you how the dots, the data points are distributed. All right, folks, so those are kind of the key terms you should remember for lecture number three of statistics. Uh, we'll see you next time on the Stats Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll check you out next time.